To see the absolute basics of how a core logic system works on a single lift, you may wish to see part one of this video. A link will appear above or you can check the link in the video description. This was relatively easy, but with two lifts, often called a duplex system, calls have to be allocated between lifts. Different manufacturers had different ways of managing this system. Also, in this video is the exciting conclusion to what happens next. It would make logical sense for lift A to continue upwards, stop at five and six for the car calls, and then at the same time collect the down calls. Then lift B could go down to the ground and make a start collecting up calls. This makes perfect sense. But what we're talking about here is the Otis call logic system with relays. If you can hold on to your excitement until after the intro, I'll explain everything. I have many videos explaining old lift logic, including this one where I perform loads of relay logic experiments. Will it continue up to get the top floor and then come back down? And give it a call. First floor. Yep. Let's give it a couple of up calls. That one and that one. Directional relay. It's pretty basic relay logic. No destinations, just keep going until the relevant relay turns off. On a duplex Otis system, the call logic worked like this. The up buttons connected to the left lift, the down buttons connected to the right lift. Sometimes this can be the other way around, but the principle will still be the same. But why? Splitting the call buttons between lifts gives each lift their own role. One lift takes people up and the other brings people down. The design tries to maintain a general flow of people traffic. This is a business. If you're competing for customers, it's not good business to price yourself out of the market. Less complexity means less components and ultimately less cost. So why can't the buttons be connected to both lifts? Simple answer, if we did, then both lifts would be dispatched to the same floor. Sometimes this does happen, as you'll see in my How It Works animation in a moment. But to design a lift that dispatches two lifts to the same call is very inefficient. This design was from the 1960s, so there are limitations. So what's the answer here? Lift A has two car calls to make on the 5th and 6th floor. Then on the 6th floor, there is a landing call waiting. It would make more sense for lift A to complete its journey upwards and collect the passenger on the sixth floor at the same time and then lift B to go in the other direction. Possible? Yes. But this would require a far more complex relay logic system. This is not what's going to happen here. As down calls are connected to the right hand lift, lift B goes to collect it, followed directly after by lift A. This is very difficult to prevent without developing a better logic system, which inevitably would involve far more relays and a far more complex design. See this express DMR system for example. This is an all relay system with far more floors than Hilton Park. This cabinet is called a dispatcher. It controls which lift goes to which floor. There are three lifts in this system. To manage 18 floors would require a very complex system with hundreds of relays. Instead, floors were divided into groups or sectors. As an example, this 18th floor may have been grouped. Low rise, mid rise and high rise. This simplifies the logic involved. Place a call and the lift waiting within that sector would respond. You also have to bring costs into mind. For a building with not many floors, Less relays, less complexity means less costs. Is it such a big deal that two lifts respond here? So back to business. Lift B is collecting down calls, whilst lift A is collecting up calls. Lift A is ahead and could collect the down call, but this is the job of lift B. As explained in part one, when an Otis lift gets to its destination, it doesn't care in which direction it goes next. This means that both up and down landing calls are cancelled at the same time. 
Two people enter, but the person going up gets into the car first, which gives the lift its direction. This was very unfortunate for the person that wanted to go down. The annoyed passenger that previously wanted to go down decides to get out early with the intention of getting the other lift back down. This was very convenient for the person waiting on the fourth floor landing with the up landing call as lift B would not have stopped otherwise. But getting out early has backfired. Even though lift A is nearer than lift B, lift A was not wired to respond to a down call. This is called Sod's Law. You thought it might have speeded things up, but instead you end up getting the lift back that you just came out of, causing two unnecessary stops when you should have just stayed in the lift to start with. Now someone arrives on the ground floor. Up buttons are wired to lift A. But you're seriously suggesting that lift B should think, not my problem, and sit on the same floor with the doors shut. There is a dedicated relay to overcome this. It's called RO, reopen. When a lift is at a floor and inactive, the call buttons on this level are taken out of the normal logic system. Pressing a landing call with a lift already on your floor activates the RO relay. So lift B now opens and cancels the up call and lift A can remain where it is. Another popular feature is the home or park position. After a timeout delay, it will automatically be sent to the ground floor where it can wait ready to start collecting up calls again. So left lift does the up calls, right lift does the down calls. What would happen if lift B is blocked by someone moving out of their flat or apartment? Does this mean that anyone waiting to go down will be unable to get a lift? You cannot simply program lift A to start responding to down calls as this is a relay based system. Fortunately, this situation was built into the design. Let's bring in the car call relays. This is a simplistic drawing showing a relay with two contacts on it. When there is a landing call, the relay is held active until any lift arrives and cancels it. But the relay is only wired to the lift that responds to it. Up relay is wired to the left lift, down relay is wired to the right lift. When lift B is blocked open or switched to inspection mode or simply switched off, the down calls must be redirected to the other lift. This is the job of TT relay transfer time. Now, the second set of contacts is connected to the other lift. This also works the other way around. If the left lift is not available, then the up calls are connected to the right lift. Let's play out our scenario of the right lift being blocked open. After a selectable time, the right lift's TT relay is active. Any down calls now receive a response from the other lift. When lift B's doors close and it goes inactive, transfer time relay is cancelled and the call buttons connect back as designed. What if lift A has a problem on its way to respond to an up call? There are a whole host of other timing circuits in the cabinet designed for safety. For example, if a lift is running and does not reach its destination within a certain time period, this may also shut down the lift. A shutdown lift activates the TT relay so that the other lift can take over. With TT active, the right lift now runs in a simplex operation. It goes up to the highest call and goes down to the lowest call, behaving in exactly the same way as described in part one. To see part one on how a single lift works, this being the Otis system, please click on the link at the top of the screen or see the video description. I do hope that you found this video interesting and have learnt a little more about the fascinating world of relay logic systems. Easy to do on a computer, but not so easy when all you have is hundreds of these. A special thank you to Pete Lomas for providing information that went into making this video.